And this week in France, the government announced that anti-Semitism was on the rise, up 74 percent over the course of one year. The most recent incident saw swastikas sprayed, painted over portraits of Holocaust survivor Simon Veil, and the word Jew written across a shop window. France's interior minister says anti-Semitism is spreading like a poison, attacking the French Republic. To give us her perspective on that, and indeed tell us about her new book, Reflections on the Question of Anti-Semitism, we're joined on set by one of France's three female rabbis, Miss Delphine Horvilleur. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, you. Given the week that's in it, Ms. Horvillar, can I start by just asking you, how do you, you read those frightening figures coming from the French government? Yeah, we heard yesterday this number, 74, that you just reminded us. Um, you know, these numbers are terrifying. At the same time, they mean nothing. I mean, you never know exactly how to translate that number. When I heard it, I immediately thought we are precisely 74 years after the end of the war. Weird coincidence. It means nothing again, but except help us remind how much we lost memory and people don't learn anything, actually. Um, we know, and we know this for so many years and centuries, actually, that anti-Semitism is always a kind of prelude to a general violence. Generally, when the Jews are stuck, so, struck somewhere, when there are attacks against Jews, it always means that very, very soon the rest of the population is going to be attacked because the Jews always represent the first the scapegoat, of course, but the first figure of uh, what we call in French alterity, otherness. They are the symbol of um, what's generally a society in a breach, a society in a state of failure cannot stand. So immediately they are pushed away or attacked. And it says something about a general violence that is about to be on the rise in, in, a, in a society, actually. It's a very warning and, sign. And given that you've studied so much the question, why do you think that you know Jews are the first ones to be targeted when society is getting fed up in general? I think that Jews do represent at the same time the same and the other. On this matter, anti-Semitism is quite different from racism. Very often we put them in the same uh, package, I would say. And when I say they're different, obviously I'm not saying that one is more in the hierarchy, uh, is you know more serious than the other. I mean they come from kind of different mindset in a way. Racism is a lot about uh, accusing the other of being less than me, uh, whereas anti-Semitism Semitism is very often accusing the Jew of being more than me, meaning the Jew is what I should be, he has what I should have. So in a way, it's kind of, you know, it's a way of, it's a complex of inferiority, but also it says something about what the Jew represents. The Jew, generally, um, for the anti-Semitic mind, I would say, uh, or psyche, the Jew represents both someone who is close to me, but different from me. Jews have been accused of being different, behaving differently, but at at the same time, being too much just like myself, you know. A few years ago in France, there was a terrifying phenomenon. When you were Googling something on the internet, it didn't matter which name you were t typing, immediately the word Jewish would appear because um, it was clear that the research, you know, that very often people were researching a name and wanted to know if that person was or was not Jewish, as if, you know, tracking the Jew was a kind of a national sport. You know, people wanted to know. you think that's something know, unique to France? You know, a, a country that likes to say it's a very secular state. Yeah. And, you know, is that idea of secular state and not being allowed to be publicly religious, is that a help or a hindrance at this stage? Yeah. I don't think it's particular to France. It is been very strong in France in recent years, but you need to be aware of the fact that France has a very particular story in its relationship to the Jews, undoubtedly. France is the country where Jews were the first to be emancipated after the French Revolution. It's the first country that gave the Jews that right. It's the first country that put a Jew, Léon Blum, in the 30s at the head of the state. But at the same time, France is the country of the Dreyfus Affair, and France is the country of Vichy and collaboration. So in the French history, there is a weird love-hate relationship with, with the Jews. I come from a family where the love for France is very, very strong and historical. But at the same time, there is a very strong memory of these scars in history. Complicated relationship. But as you say, this idea of the Jew is more, uh, that is more widespread than France. Where do you think that comes from? Um, no, I think I think it's it's pretty much everywhere today. But I think the tensions have been very very strong in recent years in France. So you could point to different factors. Maybe uh, some people point to the factor of. Uh, uh, 
Arab-Jewish tensions in France that is very maybe specific to, the, to this country, but I think it wouldn't be a right direction to look at. I simply think that in recent years in France, when anti-Semitism was on the rise, especially at the beginning of year 2000, it took a long time for the government and for the media to be able to verbalize that it was anti-Semitism. It's as if people had a hard time putting that word, verbalizing even the name anti-Semitism. At the time, the Jewish population in France felt very lonely because they were experiencing anti-Semitism on the rise, but no one was talking about it. And it took, unfortunately, many terrible dates, like Toulouse and Ilan Elimi's uh, assassination, slowly, slowly to be able to verbalize the phenomenon. Because it's strange you say it took a long time to, to acknowledge that anti-Semitism, because in your book, you look at ancient religious texts, and it seems like the idea of anti-Semitism came about almost at the same time as the word Jew. Tell us more about that. So I decided in my book, actually, you know, there are many books about, about anti-Semitism, obviously, uh, books about the history and, or the economy, the sociology or the psychoanalysis of anti-Semitism. But I try to look at it through a rabbinic lens, like through Jewish text. How do Jewish texts um, consider or think about the hate the Jews were victims of? It doesn't mean the Jews have to, in their literature, to explain anti-Semitism, but it's always interesting to think how Jewish literature and religious literature has tried to analyze this phenomenon and in, in which conditions it comes forward in a society. Um, so um, when you study Jewish texts, you realize that actually when the very word Jewish appears in the Bible, the word Jew appears in the book of Esther, in one of the biblical books, and in the very same chapter, appears the first anti-Semite in the Bible. So the rabbis, actually the commentators, suggest that when the Jews and the anti-Semites actually appear together. And in a way, they warn us, they tell us, don't even imagine you're going to get rid of anti-Semitism in history. Don't even imagine you're going to be able to make this phenomenon and this hate disappear, but just be able to recognize in which condition it appears and what you can do uh, to make sense in a way of your history in a way that you're not going to be simply a victim, but something in you is going to be able to be resilient, you know, going to be able to stand up. And I think this, I was, for me, it was very important to write a book that wouldn't be a Jewish book or simply a theology book, but a book for everybody, for non-Jews and for Jews, because I think this this phenomenon of, of resilience mm -hmm. is particularly meaningful today in a time of victimhood competition. Competition. Victimhood competition. Very briefly, tell us more about that and what it leads to. Well, we seem to experience in this time, not only in France, not only in Europe, but pretty much everywhere in the world, a victimhood competition in a way that it seems that people... Today, people really feel that having suffered or coming from a group of, or a family that defines itself as having suffered gives you a kind of noblesse, you know, gives you a kind of special uh, status. And this is, this is, I mean, in a way, this is crazy, but we experience it pretty much everywhere in the world, you know. And I think in this time of competition of victimhood, um, actually, uh, it's not a mystery that anti-Semitism is always on the rise in this moment because Jews very often appear to, um, their suffering appears to take too much room in a way. They appear to be the absolute victim. And if you want to claim you are the true victim, mm -hmm. so what do you do with the Jewish suffering? So I think in this time of competition, we really need to be able to struggle and especially to teach, to teach what resilience is about, what it means to stand up. Fascinating uh, text. Uh, Ms. Delphine Horvidar, thanks so much for giving us your insight into the current situation here in France and indeed reflections on that question of anti-Semitism. Thank you.